I don't know if people was really paying attention to what he said. He was basically saying that they hit him with the fit and all. Documentary that Candace Owens put up. One of the things that his two roommates said was, they want a tall guy like me. They want a tall guy like me. And the day when he died, he said a prayer for, you know, eight minutes. He said a prayer for eight minutes. They hit him with the fentanyl. If you look, the, the guy's knee wasn't even on his neck like that. They hit him with the fentanyl. They hit him with the fentanyl. They hit him with the fentanyl. They done something else to him that the knee ain't what killed him. Like they hit him with some fentanyl too. Probably to make it seem like he was on drugs or going crazy because he might not have been on drugs at the time. So they might have hit him with something. That might be his theory on, on this situation. You know what I'm saying? But people gonna take it. People gonna take, once people have in their mind that they don't like you or they don't like what you saying, it don't matter what you say, bro. It don't matter what you say. It's just like, People who don't like you, no matter how much money you go get, whatever, whatever, they still gonna find a reason not to like you. So it wouldn't have mattered what he said, bro. And honestly, to me, George Floyd family talking about they might sue him. I don't even suing think for what? I don't even think they gotta sue him. If they want some money, I think all they gotta do is ask Jay for some money. I think he'll just give it to him anyway. I'm trying to figure out, are they listening? Are they just picking apart to find a way and change the narr narrative to negative? Because why did, Why would they think that he's on TV trying to discredit the family? They're not completely listening. That's why when I posted, I said, what is it? Why thinkers matter? Like, you got to be able to think. Like, people not even think. They just going with... Oh, well, I'm just against him, period. Right, that's what I'm saying, because you got certain people, like he was saying, you got certain people who control the narrative. So it don't matter what you say, these people have a wider way to influence people. So they can take whatever you say. He can, he can say, Jesus is Christ, and then find a way to fuck that up somehow. You know what I'm saying? really don't matter man when people decide that they don't like you or people decide they're on a mission to try to destroy you um they're gonna especially if they the people he's talking about they have all the means in the world to discredit you or to do whatever those people we're sitting here right now me and you but they have the reach to be able to say at uh what time is it for the sake of conversation. At 9.05, these two guys were out raping a woman. Mm -hmm. Now, whether that's true or not. Whoever the, has the platform. They the have power. the reach yeah, to, to put that out there. And even if we're found, even yeah. if we're found guilt, innocent or whatever, that's always hanging over our head now. Mm -hmm. People are always gonna associate with that with us. That's the type of power that media, wide stream media has and the people who control the narrative. Let out. Then it's, what is it? Uh, Anti-Semitic comments. Listen to this though. <laughs> Man, listen. How did they change? If they looked at the interview once again, he said that he was jealous of them because he feel like they stick together and he just want our people to stick together. Now, as far as him saying anything about them, he didn't say anything disrespectful. He didn't talk about hurting nobody or nothing. I'm about to say something that might come off disrespectful. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to say that, and mind you, when I say this, I'm not having, uh, I'm not disregard any sympathy for anybody who dies or anything like that. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, these Jewish people was always getting offended about somebody talking about their, let's say, short-lived atrocity that happened. Mm -hmm. We're talking about black people who endured, endured 400 plus years. Know what I'm saying? So if somebody says something about that, somebody of, say something about that, then what's that called? What? 
what is that called? Because oh, there's they got a, it's a word. They, that's what I'm saying. They got a they got an actual definition for disrespect. So what is the definition for? I ain't culture? one because they don't care. And if, what I'm saying is they so super offended. Y'all got paid. Mm-hmm. Y'all got paid and still eating off of y'all atrocities. We haven't. If anybody should be walking around this motherfucker mad and upset and tearing shit up, it should be us. But I digress on that because we ain't doing shit. We too worried about, we we so concerned about the rest of the world and pray for here and pray for there and do this for these people and do this. And we ain't doing, mm-hmm. coming together to do shit for ourselves, so. You know, so now this is the, even crazy about it. Mm. We coming together. We, you know, what he did was something to make you have to come together, because now he got so many people together against him. To me, it's all like it's all chess. They not paying attention to actually what he's doing. Now he the talk of the town. Everybody got a finger to point his way. Now everybody collectively doing that. Mm-hmm. Jews, black people, everybody. Mm-hmm. I don't, I don't, I just don't see where the problem was. Like I don't, I couldn't break down. I watched the interview over and over again, and I just couldn't see. And not just that. How did Nori? Shout out to Drink Champs. That's they did good by even putting him on the platform. But don't backpedal. He went back and back. Yeah, don't because backpedal. he's scared. He gonna let's let's equate. Nori to a nigga who ain't never had a dollar. You feel me? Yeah. And that got a little money and he's scared he gonna lose whatever he got. You know what I'm saying? When at the same time, if he were to lose it, yeah, probably go do, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Ye bought him that, didn't Ye bought him that uh, Rose Royce he got? Uh, uh, yeah. I don't know. Ye bought him yeah. that. He named his kid out Sent there, it so, to him. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure he. Yeah, he said he just sent it to him. But yeah, you know, man. he so he basically now. You know, that's why I say if the revolution go down today, prepare to start with your family and friends. Kill them off first. Yeah. They're going to be the first line of enemies. They're going to turn. It's They're going to turn on you, bro. Those that are not thinkers. Think about how many people try to Harriet Tubman. Uh huh. How many people tried to go back and probably tell on her or whatever, and she. She had to pull that pistol. That's how it's going to be, bro. People, it's going to break down. Everybody ain't built for this shit. You know what I'm saying? I was just watching um, Elon Musk documentary. Mm -hmm. And they was talking about when he first started and, you know, just period, how crazy he is. And I come to the conclusion that anybody who is trying to, has done... Anything extraordinary, historical, extraordinary requires you to be crazy. You're right, because crazy is anything outside of the norm. As a matter of fact, watching that shit, I told myself, I need to start getting crazy about what the fuck I'm trying to do. Case, you need to step it up and get crazy about the shit you're trying to do. Mm -hmm. Everybody out there watching, y'all need to get crazy about some shit. That you trying to do. Obviously it works. 